One of my duties here is to write the titles to the videos that we uh, post. And uh, in addition to the title, there's a title within the title. I call it a thumbnail. And so I wrote a thumbnail for one of the videos that are upcoming. And I got a message back that, can you change it, it, it for something more thought provoking? <laughs> Now, what startled me was that I had thought that that phrase that I had put in there was extremely thought-provoking. <laughs> but I was clearly apparently wrong. Now, I didn't get upset at this. The startling, uh, uh, I would even call it a pratiba, which may be a bit inflated, but the insight that came with that message was, well, you know, this is all a dream, and therefore what I am receiving must mean I haven't thought deeply enough about that phrase. And then immediately, I couldn't stop thinking about it for two days <laughs> and writing down all the implications of it. So anyway, I want to share it with you since it's now the theme of the retreat. <laughs> Becoming once being. No, it's probably true. It's a very boring idea, perhaps, or too obvious, or too, uh, uh, too apparent. Uh, but then I realized, well, wait a minute. It wasn't all that apparent to me as I thought it was. First of all, the word once, of course, means de both desire and lack, right? So becoming lacks being. And what are the implications of that? Because what do we mean by becoming? It's the trajectory through time of the character that you are playing within this dream field that we quaintly call a world. So. The first, the first thing is that I realized is that, wait a minute, there's a huge amount to actually understand about what is being, what is becoming, that I had not fully thought through to the end. And so I suddenly fell into a rabbit hole in which uh, a, a huge number of things came to me and a second thing that came to me, uh, I'll call it a, a different pratiba, but the connection between the two then became clearly the focus of the retreat, the relationship of the two. And that was that I suddenly recognized my aim in writing these titles was not to be thought provoking. That wasn't my goal. Although, indeed, sometimes provoking thought can be a, uh, an instrument, a medium, uh, to bring about the aim. But what is really the aim is to allay the production of thought constructs, to help someone go beyond thought. And to do that, the goal of all of these presentations, I recognized in that startling moment, was to provide resonance. To provide resonance. And I hadn't really thought that deeply about the concept of resonance either. So I realized that first we have to deal with becoming once being, and then we have to deal with the issue of resonance. So I, I don't know how much I will get through of either of these tonight, but I think it's an important uh, relationship that we will discover. So of course, the title being Breakthrough to the Blissful Light, where is that light? That must be the light of your being, right? 
and your becoming, although becoming itself includes being as well as coming, but it, the coming is really a going, a running away from the light. And the, go, the medium or the motive of that needs to be understood. So, on the one hand, we can say that becoming is the desire for change, right? If I'm in my uh, becoming mode, which we call the ego, uh, then I'm looking for a green, 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 they say, on the far side of the hill place to be able to uh, to find uh, what is always elsewhere. And I know I won't find it on the next hill, but I'll, I'll assume the one after that will contain what I'm looking for. Or I will mourn a past from which I have lost what I wanted and it can never return. And it was only a dream. Or one is in total despair and wants nothing, but not out of vairagya, but out of the activation of the lower death drive. All right, so that was the reason for playing those three songs about green. And uh, uh, I want you to recognize that those are the three major modes of resistance to the light. and the themes of most people's journey through life. So your becoming is a concealment of your being. So long as you're identified with a character who is going through time, the light, because the light is eternal, not in time, is not accessible. And the question, of course, is how to make it accessible. One of the problems is that from the perspective of becoming, being is thought of as nothing. Being is boring. The ego likes change. It always wants the new, the novel, the different. But being is changeless. And so the ego dreads falling into being. It won't even say rising into being. And being is, uh, is something that is deliberately something one remains ignorant of within the ego. So the, the problem is for the ego in a state of becoming, because it lacks being, it is burdened with self-doubt because it's not real. Your character is fictional. Who are you? Who is that becoming representing who is playing you within the dream field? Who are you really? And your becoming doesn't know. It's lost. It may put up a good bluff and bravado, and one of the defenses of the ego is to pretend that it has certainty. But Underneath the facade of certainty is always doubt. But that's why the ego chooses master's discourse, as we call it, to be a know-it-all, to think, oh, I've already heard all this. I've worked through my issues. I have done it. I have gone through ego death. I have realized God. I don't need to hear anything more or I'll do it my way, and I don't want to take in any ideas from anyone else. I'll figure it out. So there's a, 
there's a cutting off of uh, the wisdom, both externally and internally, that could come because the position one has to take out of the fragility of one's ego is to uh, pretend that uh, it's anti-fragile and uh, it's capable of uh, fulfillment, even has fulfillment when, of course, it doesn't. So the ego wants freedom, but it also wants control. Now what freedom is, and the universe is organized according to the principle of freedom, which is what in quantum physics they call the uncertainty principle, meaning even at the level of a subatomic particle, you can't determine where it's going to be or how fast it's going, or at least not both of those at once. You'll never know. It's always indeterminate. And that indeterminacy is at every fractal level of the dream field. Now, if you appreciate real freedom, you're happy about that. But if you're in the ego, you need to control the freedom of the other because you're terrified that something will happen that will take away your illusion of freedom. So being that there's constant change, and that change cannot be predicted, the ego is always in a state of anxiety at one level or another, not knowing how to navigate and prepare and uh, cope with all the possible threats to its equilibrium. When we think about it, <clears throat> every field, <clears throat> let's say field of science, is a study of change. That's all you do if you're a scientist. Some will study the changes at a subatomic particle level. Some will study uh, chemical changes. Uh, a psychologist will study uh, the changes in the psyche and in the, uh, the type of cognitive illusions, if one's a cognitive therapist that one is uh, embedding in one's narrative, et cetera, et cetera. But at every level, what is being studied is change. In order to try to get a handle on, and therefore control of, and prediction of, what the next change is gonna be. When will the next earthquake happen? When will the next volcano go off? And the, when will, will the, uh, the next hurricane or whatever? And so there's an attempt to control everything. But that attempt of science and technology is always flawed because of the very nature of reality. The ego cannot uh, have mastery over the real. Right? Does this make sense so far? Yeah? Okay. So, the ego is in a state of becoming, uh, which is uh, a state of uncertainty. And as its doubt in itself grows, as it realizes its failure to be able to uh, not only control, but to... Uh, to achieve the, um, the, the self-presentation that it wants. In other words, the, the ego in becoming can <clears throat> become very clever, but it cannot realize its genius. And cleverness is really not a, uh, a good substitute. And eventually, the ego will use negative defenses against being, like thinking and saying, uh, 
but I'm unworthy of it. And therefore, I, I, I don't deserve being. I'll just stay on my trajectory of becoming. I've become too sinful, impure, too flawed a character, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. That, too, is a fiction, a delusion. It cannot be true because you are not your becoming. You cannot be anything but your being. The very fact that you are aware of change requires you to have a changeless awareness. Or you wouldn't know you're the same person now that you were in childhood and in infancy and all of that and, and have a record of all the changes. And many people even, you know, write down the dates when different events happened and different insights and different chapters in their life narrative, etc. So we're aware of change because we are changeless in our essential nature. So we are in our being. That's why I say you don't really have to break through, but there's a denial, an internal denial of that truth. And yet, it cannot be disproven logically. This makes sense to everyone? You are in your being. And your becoming can only exist within being. Being is the medium in which change takes place. If there weren't a changeless medium, there could be no space for becoming. There'd be no awareness of change. There'd be no consciousness. Mm -hmm.